All right, so I just came in from band practice and it's already pretty late, but I have to start back my daily videos grind because we just have a short space of time and it's chemistry and maths physics. Physics is only 28, chem is only 22, and admat is only 22nd. Chem, admat, one day after each other. So, please come grab me by NBA since morning. Alright, so, four things before we start the admat video. One, I saw the news about the leak. Um, so, I don't know if it's a hoax. Uh, don't get too frightened. At most likely, I think nothing will come out of it. Or don't get your hopes up. Some people want to do over the exam. Some people wouldn't mind getting an extra test and another exam. But personally, I don't think much will come out of it unless something is confirmed. Yo, Alia, while editing this video, 1 p.m. in the night, a student texts me and tells me that I leaked the exam. Hear this, the solutions video that I did, the paper that I got, I, I did that using a paper that was legally given to me hours after the exam was finished. So, I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, back to the video. Two, I posted the solution to the vector's question on my Instagram. Three, someone really the questions in paper three to me and yeah, they have a point. It was, it was interesting, it was interesting. So four, I will try to post the solutions to the paper three sometime, but right now I just had to focus on physics, chem, and maths. We have limited days, I don't know how much videos I can do, but I really want to try and help as many people as possible. So today I was walking around in school, trying to find a classroom to film and maths so I could keep up the time and do as many videos as possible. Um, but I wasn't in a quiet classroom, I thought I wouldn't get you until... Watch your video. I was walking in school, and I passed one of the classes and I saw this, I saw this. And I was like, have I did. Let's start off with the first question, 2017, last year, uh, the function f is defined by f of x is equal to 2x plus p, x minus 1, x is not equal to 1 because we don't want to divide by 0, p must be a constant, p is a constant, determine the inverse of f of x, okay? So to start off this question, you let f of x be equal to y, so then your equation will look like y is equal to 2x plus p over x minus 1. You want to interchange variables next. So you're going about this the traditional manner. Anywhere you see x, you're going to put y. And anywhere you see y, you're going to put x. So you'll have x is equal to 2y plus p x minus 1. And then you want to make y the subject of the formula. Sorry, this should be y as well. All right. So make y subject of formula. So next up, now notice you have two y's there, so it'll be kind of hmm, interesting to make that the subject of the formula, but you can do it. First step is to bring across the denominator. So y minus 1 equal 2y plus p. We want all the y's on one side, but we need to get this y out of this situation he's in right now. So we need to expand that bracket. And 2y plus p. Now we can bring the y across. xy minus 2y equal, bring across that x p plus x or x plus p, whatever way you want to put it. Now we can pull out the y by factorizing. So y into x minus 2. Are you seeing the end of this? And y is going to be equal p plus x over x minus 2. So this is a straightforward question. First question in paper 2, 2017. I'm just testing out if this works. So your final answer is going to be the f inverse of x is equal to p plus x or x plus p, whatever way, x minus 2, and also state that x cannot be equal to 2. In time you have a little denominator, make sure your denominator cannot be equal to 0. So this is the answer for the first part of the question from last year in Admats. Maybe I can squeeze in the next part before the video ends. 
So the next part asks if f in rules of 8 is 5, find the value of p. So we are starting off with the idea that f in rules of 8 is equal to 5. Let's see. And we already know that f in rules of x is equal to x plus p or p plus x, whatever, over, over x minus 2. So this is a simple substitution. We can put 5 here. We can put eight in the place of the x. So all of these numbers here were substituted. Eight was substituted for x and five was substituted for f of x. And now we just simply solve this. You will end up with five is equal to eight plus p over six and t is equal to eight plus p and p is equal to 22, because 30, let me just squeeze in that line, they don't skip no steps, 30 minus 8 is equal to 22. All right, so let's just take a quick look back on two more years, 2016, they gave us a function, f of x is equal to 2x minus 5, and they gave us the domain, and we asked to determine the range, I'll just give you a hint in this one, and you'll try this one out for yourself. So the domain... If the domain is specified, you can find the range by plugging in those values into the equation. So go ahead, find the corresponding range for f of x is 2x minus 5. And then you ask to find the inverse, f inverse of x, which is simple. You could actually do this. You could actually get a question like this in normal mathematics. And then we step into a more interesting part in the question where they ask us to sketch the graph of f of x and f inverse of x. Right, so those are just two lines. You'll know how to sketch lines already because you're doing maths a while now. So I'm hoping that you know how to sketch some lines, right? So you sketch those lines according to the points you got. You'd have to get a few points, maybe two, two three points for f inverse of x, because eh? we didn't get no points, but we have points for f of x. And finally, we asked to comment on the relationship between the two graphs. What is the relationship between f of x and f inverse of x? And the relationship is such that the functions are reflections of each other in the line y is equal to x. So, so when you do the question, you'll get a graph looking similar to this, where you'll have one line drawn down here and the next line somewhere up here, and you'd be able to tell the relationship between the lines. The lines are reflections of each other in the line, I'm going to put dotted lines here, y is equal to x. This reflects in the line y is equal to x. My graph not drawn to scale, obviously, but you catch the idea. So here's the question from 2015 June. The functions f and g are defined by f of x is x squared plus 5, g of x is 4x minus 3. We ask to find the value of a composite function and then to determine the inverse. So I'm leaving this one in your hands, no hints provided. And yes, I will try to remember to put up these solutions in these questions on the next AdMaths video that I do. So AdMaths and chemistry students, let me know the topics that are giving you stress and hell in AdMaths and chemistry and I will get to them in subsequent videos.